Good morning, good afternoon, good night. Welcome to a good night. That should be good evening, not good night. You wouldn't be watching this otherwise. Anyways, welcome to another Yellowfin University video. This one brought to you by Tom Linton, product consultant here in North America. This video is more along the lines of an introduction to web services. If you're looking for, uh, you know, a little bit more of a, an advanced or you just want to see the code, essentially, when I get to doing examples in Java and doing an example in, in .NET, skip this video. It's not for you. This is going to be an introduction to web services. Look at how, how Yellowfin fits in that architecture, maybe do a few drawings. But again, if you're looking for the code and you're expecting something uh, not coming in this video, move on to the next one. Today we're going to be talking about a pretty heated topic, maybe not heated, but asked about quite a bit, which is Yellowfin Web Services. We're going to be talking about one specific function of our web services today, and that's going to be single sign-on, uh, SSO in other words. Um, really, we're choosing this one because it's the most asked for on, on demos, on consults. This is one that I show quite often. And hey, once you get one of them down, it's just a matter of changing the function and, and tossing in a couple different parameters. So once you get one down, you can really use all of Yellowfin's web services. We have reporting web services. We have an administrative web service. Uh, today, we're using the administrative web service. And we're going to be single sign-on, ing single sign-on ing <laughs> into Yellowfin. Um, so your end user doesn't have to. So we're going to break this out into three different videos. The one we're talking uh, about now is just going to be the introduction. What is web services? What are web services? Um, you know, what do they look like? What does it look like for my end user? And then two and three are going to be practical applications. So we'll show you how to build web services in Java. And we're essentially just going to make a web service call in Java, in the background, we'll retrieve some information from it. We'll build a URL, plug it into the, the uh, browser, and we'll show that we single sign-on into Yellowfin. So that will be the process for that one. The next one will be doing all that same stuff, but in .NET. I get that all the time on demos. Hey, hey Tom, I'm a, I'm a .NET shop here, and I see your Java application, so we can't use you, right? I say, no, that, that's not true at all. Actually, it's almost easier to use Yellowfin web services in .NET just by creating a service rep reference. We're a SOAP. We have a SOAP web services, not a uh, REST. Wow, where's my voice today? Not a REST web service. We are a SOAP web service. And what that means is we have a cool document online, the WSDL, that you can just add as a service reference and it'll build all the classes or namespaces that you need. And you can simply just build web services that way or your web service call that way. So extremely easy. You'll see both those examples. Again, we'll have a Java example and we will have a .NET example as those seem to be the, the two most popular. We might add more uh, down the line. So today, what are we talking about here? We are talking about web services. Gosh, I remember back in the day, web services, I didn't even know what they were. It was kind of a buzzword. You know how things come out like web app? You mean a website? <laughs> kind of web services. It was kind of a buzzword back in the day, but now I truly understand it. Um, so I can speak somewhat smartly about it. But essentially, we're talking about web service today. And specifically, we're going to make a single sign on call through web services, through Yellowfin web services. And let's just go ahead and underline the SS and O. That's how we get SSO. If you hear me say SSO. I am referring to single sign-on. Cool. Don't know what level you're at. We always start from the bottom. So web services. Let's go ahead and assume I am your customer here. And this is my lovely computer. And let's draw a little, little window here, a little screen. Maybe on that screen I have my website on here, www.whatever.com. There we go. Well, maybe we'll even draw a pie chart there. Maybe you're an analytical app. I don't know what you are. And, oh, we can't be a computer without a keyboard. Here we go. So you have your computer here. You have your, your end user, and they're logged into your web application, your website, and they're doing stuff, whatever it may be. Um, in this case, let's just say it's uh, your application is called foobar.com. And you know what? That's that is a, a little uh, throw-in for my consultant, Tyler. Uh, or not my consultant, but my colleague, Tyler. 
he uh, he always adds foobar whenever he's trying to make examples. The word to use is foobar. Uh, kind of funny, but anyways, in honor of Tyler, we will call our web application foobar. And you know what? Here's where my web application lives. Here's the server where that lives. And then let's put yellowfin over here. Yellow fin. And this is going to be a server looking thing too. Little cylinder. There we go. So this is where the yellowfin web application lives. Yeah, they're in different spots. Same spot. Doesn't matter. All going to be the same regardless. So we have, and this is my end user. Why not label him? End user. And you know what? We're going to give him a name here. Bob. This is going to be Bob. So Bob is trying to get into foobar.com. And now he wants to go to the analytic area of foobar.com. And here's a little link. We'll draw a little link there. That's going to be the, he'll click on that. And it actually, we've chosen to do tight integration with Yellowfin. So we want to single sign on them into Yellowfin. We want to single sign on Bob specifically into Yellowfin. So he doesn't have to authenticate again. Look, he already authenticated once into my app application. Let's draw that out there. So Bob has said, you know what? Here is my username and my password. So he is authenticated. And he authenticated into your application. Authenticated. I hope I spelled that right. It's going to look really bad later if I didn't. Anyways, so he has authenticated into the FUBAR application. And he now clicks on this analytic link. And he doesn't want to have to, again, to get from, from here to Yellowfin. He doesn't want to have to, again, here, oh, if I can draw an arrow. He doesn't want to have to, again, provide his username and, and password here. Let's say, you know what, we ask him again, username and password to get into uh, Yellowfin. So username, password. But why would we ask him to do that again? He authenticated here already. He doesn't know that we're using Yellowfin in foobar.com. So I don't want him to see that he has to sign on again. That, that's not a good user experience. So we don't want this to happen. We just want this to be a seamless experience where he communicates back and forth with Yellowfin. How would we do that? That's where web services come in, specifically the single sign-on function. So we're essentially, Bob clicks analytics, and that is going to launch a script on your application server. So that may be an application that you've written in Java, maybe an application you've written in .NET, and it may be an application that you wrote in Node. Why not? Node.js. So it can be in whatever Python, I don't care, it doesn't matter what language you use on that side, you're essentially gonna write the web service call to go to Yellowfin and say, hey, Bob signing in, FYI. So we'll call this, we'll auth again. And that's going to be through web services, SSO. I'm going to underline the W and the S. So when I write WS, that's web service. We're going to call that web service in Yellowfin and say, hey, Bob signing in. We're going to use maybe his username from our session and pass that over to Yellowfin. And Yellowfin's going to say, ah, yes, he is a user. He is authenticated. Here's some information back to you, specifically a session ID that you'll append to our URL. And then you're going to go right back to Bob and you're going to say, hey, Bob, here's the analytics application. We'll call this analytics. Here's the analytics application that you wanted to get into or the analytics portion of foobar.com. And he doesn't know the difference. You've redirected him. To Yellowfin, but you've restyled Yellowfin, or maybe you're just iframing Yellowfin within your application. Um, that could be a possibility too, or calling uh, the Java JavaScript API, whatever it may be. But that's the process there. So essentially, to avoid Bob having to pass a username and password into Yellowfin, he clicks on Analytics or whatever it's called in your application. That goes over to our server, where in whatever language we want, we call Yellowfin's web service. And that web service, again, is a, is a uh, SOAP web service. The cool thing about that is it has a definition, everything you need out there. That definition is called a WSDL, Web Service Definition Language. Boy, if I got that acronym wrong, that's embarrassing too. But essentially, it has a WSDL, and that WSDL contains what the web service needs, what it's exposing to your application. You know, you can do things like uh, single sign-on. You can do things like give me all the the reports this user can see, whatever it may be. But we're communicating via a SOAP web service called Yellowfin. Yellowfin says, yep, he's authenticated. Let me send that successful response back. And you redirect them to Yellowfin with a token 
um, attached to the end and it will single sign on them into Yellowfin. All this is unbeknownst to Bob. All he did was click analytics and up pops this pie chart or this dashboard or a create report screen where he may be creating reports. So, uh, oh, one more thing before we sign off here altogether, I'll make this quick. I've been getting this question a lot. Hey, I have a cloud uh, service. What do they call them? Authentication as a service, AAS. Uh, oh, I think I'm spelling a bad word. I'm going to stop that. But anyways, authentication as a service here. I think one of them could be auth O, if I'm not mistaken. I may have run into that. We'll draw a little cloud. Oh, boy, that's a terrible cloud. Let's make these bigger. There we go. So that's a cloud authentication service that handles um, just all the authenticating in their web application. So in this case, can you use this with the Yellowfin? The answer is yes. Again, Yellowfin can sit behind whatever authentication you want to do. So that could be going from, let's say Bob says, hey, I'm going to click analytics and it is going to go up to Autho here and do some authentication. Once it's successful, it sends that back down to the server and then you call the Yellowfin web service to log Bob in. And you don't need to pass a password. You can make it so you don't pass a password. In this case, we'll do it with the password so that way you can see it with a complete web service call with a password. Um, however, you do not need to do it with a password. You just have to change something in the configuration database. And really when I say change something, I just mean add one row. <laughs> <laughs> and you can now authenticate without uh, passing a password in. Because most of the time, are you going to be able to get the password out of your cloud application or out of here? It could be salted, whatever. You don't want to be passing that around. So if they've already successfully authenticated on your side, then just call Yellowfin's web service without the password over here. So you're not passing more sensitive information um, across the web. So um, essentially, again, all that would look like is, you know, maybe Bob's logging into your application. He enters his username and password. It goes up to the cloud and it says, hey, Bob's logging in to, to foobar.com. And it says, oh, it's successful. And it's going to send that to your application, success, maybe a session ID, something interesting, whatever it may be. And then you're going to serve them up foobar.com. So once you get that and you serve them up foobar.com, you may also behind the scenes, when you get that successful response from Otho, call the Yellowfin web service to single sign on. Yellowfin says, yep, good to go. Here's his token. And now you have that. And where you can redirect him, whatever you want to do with it, but you have the token that, that is good for signing him in. So yes, short answer, we do work with authentication as a service providers. All right, I think we've done it. That is everything in this video. Um, introduction again to web services, specifically the single sign-on function. We call it login user or login user no password. Those are the function names. Stay tuned or just look down. I don't know where it is. I can't see the screen, but there will be a Java version where we're gonna do it in Java. And then there's gonna be a .NET version where we will do the web service call in .NET and show you how cool it is and how easy it is. So I don't ever want to, want to hear you say that we don't work well with .NET because we do and it's cool. Stay tuned. Thanks for listening in.